What should you optimize for when preparing for your epi exam? Hello, this is Farouk, instructor and tutor here at directhub.net. Before we get into this video, hit that subscribe and like button so you won't miss any future epi exam tips, epi exam practice problem videos. If you're currently studying or about to get started, do you really know what you're optimizing for for this epi exam? Do you have a study structure, a routine that's helping you build your performance? for the FE exam, and most importantly, are you using effective study strategies that will be directly applicable to the actual FE exam? First of all, not all exams are created equal. If you're still in school or maybe you've been out of school for some time, remember those midterm and final college exams? What were you optimizing for for those midterm and final exams? Some of us might say, I just wanted a C score because I know those C's get degrees. I would argue for most of us, that's not the case. We wanted the highest score possible. We wanted to get scholarships. We wanted to increase our GPA. All of that mattered. Therefore, on these exams, we were trying to optimize for the highest score possible. So that's what we're optimizing for. And with that in mind, we started asking certain questions. We would look at previous years, exams, practice exams that we got from previous years, and that helped us to see what kind of questions might get asked. Are they tricky questions, simple questions? And we would nag the professor with this question. Is this going to be on the test? We wanted to know exactly what's going to be on the test. We wanted to know exactly what we should cover and what we should focus on and study and prepare for because we're optimizing for the highest score possible. Now here comes the FE exam. Should you optimize and prepare for this FE exam similar to what you would do for these midterm and final college exams? Absolutely not. The FE exam requires a different optimization strategy, a new approach that we can apply on exam day. Remember this, the FE exam is graded on a pass or fail system. Therefore, we need to optimize for the pass or fail environment. Many students don't optimize for this pass or fail environment by falling into the trap of preparing for their FE exam just like how they would for those college exams. For example, a student might look at specific FE exam problems, let's say from the NCS practice exam, and think to themselves, I need to know this. I need to know this exactly and maybe memorize the steps, thinking they will see that problem on their actual FE exam. I'll tell you this, you're gonna be very lucky if you see that same problem. I would say you're probably gonna see a completely new exam with new practice problems. So do not memorize and do not fixate on certain practice problems you're practicing, you're trying to learn the concepts, you're trying to build your problem solving skills. And another trap is a student thinking that they have to prepare, let's say for a college exam, that's about two hours. We know the FE exam is a long exam. It's 110 questions, that's five hours and 20 minutes. So we have to finish it within that allocated time. So we need to build our endurance, we need to build our stamina, and we need to employ a certain time management strategy as we go through this exam. It's not like a college exam. It's gonna be fast paced, we need to react fast, we need to read problem statements fast, flag what we have to flag, and get through the exam as best as possible. Now that we have a big picture idea of what we need to optimize for, we need to narrow down a list of high yield resources and strategies that will help us reach our fullest potential just above that passing mark. By far the unbeatable method is using high quality practice questions, high quality quizzes, and high quality full length practice exams. Notice the key word there practice. It's all about deliberate practice. It's all about engaging your active learning where you're not just reading material, where you're not just watching someone else do a practice problem, not just watching long boring lectures. We want to avoid that content review stage. Yes, we want to cover the concepts, but most importantly, focus on practice problems. 
high quality ones, high quality question banks, and high quality full length practice exams. Because when we do these practice questions, we're preparing for the exam day conditions. Remember, you're gonna get 110 questions and we have to answer those fast in an effective time. We have to have the endurance to answer those and we have to know how to do those using our own problem solving skills. And the best way to build that is through practice. And you will naturally learn the concepts because you're gonna make mistakes through these practice problems and you're gonna naturally ask questions. You're gonna discover new questions and we have to reflect on these questions and then we would do some research, look up concepts and really learn those concepts then continue doing practice problems. And for those full length practice exams, make sure you do these under similar conditions to that on exam day. You want to do these in a similar environment. You want to do these timed and you want to do these under pressure. This is gonna allow you to build your endurance, your stamina and overall problem solving under pressure. And this is the chance where you practice your exam day strategy. Whether this involves, let's say, flagging problems, flagging these problems you don't know, doing the ones you know on the first run, then coming back to those flag problems, and also your exam day strategy to see what you're going to do when exam anxiety hits. It's a real thing. This exam is stressful. And under stress, we're not going to perform as good as we want. So what are we going to do? Are we going to practice certain breathing techniques? Are we gonna practice certain self-talk? What will you do to overcome that stress and to better react to that stress on exam day? That training is so important, it's so crucial and it's best developed by doing these timed exams, timed quizzes, and you can absolutely train for that. You're gonna train for that and I believe you're capable of doing that and I believe you're capable of doing just good enough and being above that passing mark. If you found today's FE exam tips video helpful, hit the like button below and let me know in the comments below how your FE exam prep is going so far. And if you're ready to take your learning to the next level, to engage your active learning and to practice high quality practice problems, check out my review course in the link below. If you have questions about the course and anything civil FE exam related, shoot me an email. Thank you for your practice. Take those breaks and I'll see you in the next video.